So I have good news and bad news. Um, the good news is this is the last talk. The bad news is it's a long one. So my name is Vinnie Falco. I work at Ripple. I have the pleasure and honor of working with Howard Hinnant, Scott Schur, um, Thursday mornings keynote speaker David Schwartz, who's the chief, chief cryptographer. And I'm going to talk to you about a library I've developed called Beast. Um, so Beast is a header-only C++11 or later library that offers HTTP and WebSocket implementations using Boost.Azio. So Boost is a requirement, it's a dependency. Um, it tries to emulate Boost.Azio in every way. All of the interfaces resemble Azio. Um, the documentation resembles Azio. It's got a lot of the same features. It's in the Boost incubator. And as soon as I get home, I'm going to submit it for a Boost review. There's documentation tests and sample code, including a fully functional web server and uh, WebSocket server. And the good news is it's production-ready code. It's running on Ripple production servers. There's a few other third parties in the wild that are shipping products using Beast. So I think it's very robust. I haven't heard any bug reports yet. Um, surely they'll be coming soon. Um, so you might have seen this brochure that I've been handing out that has information about Beast, including the link. There's a box full of brochures. P please feel free to grab one on your way out. Uh, okay, so, so why do we need HTTP and WebSockets? Well, here we have an HTTP request in JavaScript. This is built into the language. You can see it looks very nice. And here's the equivalent request in C++. So it, it's been long enough. We need this thing. It's a little bit embarrassing that we don't have it yet. So I'm going to give... Uh, I'm going to give the talk broken up into two parts. I'm going to talk about WebSocket, and then we're going to talk about HTTP, and I'm going to show you very tiny example programs. So for WebSocket, Beast um, establishes the session for you. It lets you send and receive WebSocket messages, and you can use it to build clients or servers. The interfaces are symmetric, and it offers both synchronous and asynchronous interfaces. Now, I don't recommend that you build production servers with the synchronous APIs, uh, but they're there for completeness and for you know, writing test programs or getting up and running quickly. The performance is competitive, it's production ready, passes the Autobahn test suite. So I'm gonna show you a WebSocket Echo example. It's gonna to connect to a remote server, handshake and send a message, and then receive and print the, uh, the response. The first thing we need to do is connect to the remote host. Now in the sample code, the Boost ASIO symbols are purple, so the, what we need to do is establish our socket connection. So there's no Beast code here yet. This is what you're familiar with, Boost ASIO. We are resolving a DNS name, and then we're connecting to it using Boost ASIO. When this code is done running, we're going to have a socket that's connected, and then it's going to be ready to roll. So now that we have our connected socket, we create the Beast WebSocket stream, which is a wrapper around the socket. The template argument tells you the type of what it's wrapping. In this case, it's a non-owning reference to a socket. That could just as easily be an SSL stream or an owning reference or even your own user-defined type, which meets the requirements of sync or async stream. So we declare our variable. Now we perform a WebSocket handshake, which consists of an HTTP request and response sequence. It's the HTTP upgrade message. Beast handles that for you. Um, in the call, you tell it uh, the host, which becomes the host field in the HTTP headers, and then slash is the URI. That could be your, you know, whatever, your CGI slash bin or whatever you're using. So we handshake, and now we write our message. So we're using ASIO's buffer function, which creates a const buffer sequence from a string. Um, Beast's write function takes any const buffer sequence that meets the requirements, so you can use all the things that you're familiar with from ASIO. So we sent our message, now we want to receive a message and print it out. So we declare a stream buff to hold the contents of the message, and, um, and then a, a local variable of type opcode, which is an enum that tells you if your received message is binary or text, that's part of the WebSocket protocol. So we call read, when that returns, now we know if it's binary or text, and we have the data in our stream buff. So now we want to write that to standard out, to string is a beast utility function that converts a const buffer sequence into a standard string. So beast comes with not only HTTP and WebSocket, but a really handy collection of utility functions such as to string. Um, to, it's beyond the scope of this talk for me to go over all the utility functions, but they're in there and they're in the docs. So we got our message. Uh, now we need to close the WebSocket connection. 
So this is a protocol level close. In WebSocket, uh, the connection is considered closed when both sides send a close frame. Uh, this is doing that, and Beast handles that for you. It manages the negotiation of those messages. You can tell it the code, which could be normal or an error or whatever you want to tell the other side. And, and then it closes the socket for you. Okay, so you saw the synchronous interfaces that use exceptions, but there's also interfaces that use error codes, just like ASIO. And of course, of the full suite of asynchronous interfaces, just like ASIO. Um, here we have an example that uses a completion handler uh, that takes the error code, which is just like ASIO. Or you could use a coroutine, stackful or stackless, standard futures, or even your own user-defined types as long as they meet the requirements. So this API is ready for the networking specification. Um, I've worked with Chris on making sure that this is gonna be right, and it's gonna be great. Okay, so HTTP requests and responses are used in the WebSocket handshake, so the library also exposes those HTTP implementations to you so that you can take advantage of it and do HTTP in your own C++ programs. So now I'm gonna show you a, a very short HTTP example. The scope of the library's HTTP support is to provide a universal message container. So that means it offers a container that can store a complete HTTP message, including the headers, the request or response specific fields, and also the message body. The container is usually copyable and movable, and, and it has everything that it needs. Um, so, so there's actually two protocols for HTTP now. There's the HTTP 1, which covers 1.0 and 1.1, and HTTP 2. Uh, the current implementation in Beast serializes and deserializes HTTP 1 messages only. There are future plans to do 2.0. It's not in there yet. Like the WebSocket, you can build uh, clients or servers. The interfaces are symmetric. There are synchronous and asynchronous interfaces that work with any uh, stream concept like the IP TCP socket or SSL stream. The performance is ready for production. We have servers that are using it. It's great. Uh, now, one thing about this library is that it's not really targeted towards end users. It's targeted towards library developers. Now, what does that mean? That means that these interfaces are low level. It's not a replacement for curl. There are things that it doesn't do, like it won't decode your, your MIME types or you know, figure out your multi-part message body, but it provides a foundation upon which the C++ community can build all of the HTTP uh, tools and implementations that other languages have. So I'm gonna show you an example of doing an HTTP request and response. We're gonna to connect to the remote host. We're gonna build a get request and send it out, and then we're gonna receive the response and print it. Okay, first step, just like before, we need to create, create our socket and connect to the remote host. So we use Boost ASIO to do that. There's no beast involved yet. Um, just like before, this code's gonna run. We're gonna have our socket that's gonna be nicely connected, and then we're gonna be ready to rock and roll. So we want to send a request, we declare the message container. So here we're declaring an HTTP1 container that is a request, and the template argument tells you the type of, of the message body. In this case, there's no message body, so we say empty body, which is a special beast type that means, hey, there's no body. Now we fill the fields out. The method is a string. It can be any string that you want. Hopefully the other end will know what that is. If it's get, you're going to have a lot of success. Um, the URL is another, just a plain string. There's nothing fancy with the URLs. You just provide the string and that's it. Uh, version of 11 means HTTP 1.1. It's very simple. Not, there's no over-engineering here. The user agent is a required header for 1.1, so we have to insert it. Okay, so now we have a complete GET request and we want to send it. How do we send it? Well, we call write, just like that. There's our socket. Now, you can see there's a function called prepare that's an optional function that you can call. Prepare is a beast function that fills in some information for you, does a little bit of work for you, like it'll set the content length, in this case to zero. Um, it'll set connection keep alive or connection close according to your preferences. So there's a little, some overloads that do things for you. You don't have to use it. If you want complete control over the HTTP message, you can have it. Again, this is the low level library, so it's designed to let you do anything that you want. So we sent our request, now we want to receive the response. So we declare an object of type response. And this is gonna be an HTTP1 response. The template argument tells us that the body is gonna be represented by a standard string, which is everyone knows how to use those. It's easy to print, it's easy to understand. So that's what we're gonna do. And now we call read on the socket. So 
After that call returns, we're going to have a nice response. It's all filled in. It's all going to be great. Now, due to the way that the parser works, um, the implementation of read can read past the message and start reading some of the next message for performance reasons. Any of those extra bytes that uh, it had to read, they're going to be in the stream buffer and you reuse them on the next call. It all works. Um, so beast message containers are streamable to any standard O stream and it uses the same deserialization algorithm uh, that it uses to write to the socket. So now you can see what they look like, you know, in standard out. It's great. It's useful for debugging. Okay, just like WebSocket, you have asynchronous interfaces for all the functions. They look just like ASIO functions. They have the same limitations and the same performance characteristics. Here we have an example of doing a read with the completion handler. Um, that completion token could be a coroutine, stackful or stackless, a standard future, or your own user-defined type that meets the requirements. Now, there's a lot of advanced features that I'm not really able to cover right now. For example, user-defined customizations of the message body where you can define not only your own type of container, but also the algorithms used to send and receive that body. Uh, for example, you can have an HTTP message whose body is incremental data that's generated from a coroutine. For example, a long-running database query. You can have that streaming out, and it can be either push or pull, depending on how you write it. Uh, you can have a read-only message body, such as uh, uh, serving a file from the hard drive, which is one of the examples that Beast comes with. That web server has a, an example of a message with a file body. So any HTTP library has to have a parser if it's going to deserialize uh, requests and responses. And Beast is no different. It's got a parser that's header-only. It's modeled after the Node.js parser, which is pretty cool, pretty fast. A lot of people use it. Um, this parser is stateless, it doesn't allocate any memory, and it's totally self-contained, so if you were to get Beast's parser and uh, reuse it in your own project without the rest of it, I won't be offended, and it'll work for you. So in summary, uh, I would like to think that if the author of Boost ASIO was to write an HTTP or WebSocket library, um, he would write something whose interfaces looked very much like this. Uh, I have couple of extra minutes, so I will just quickly show you the performance of the parser. Um, so everything in Beast was designed to be sensitive to performance. It competes very favorably. Um, this is what the message container looks like. You can see it's very simple. There's the headers, and then there's the body. And there's a little bit more, but uh, for exposition, I've left that stuff out. You can check it out uh, in the repository. Um, so there's a box of brochures if you, after, if you want to talk to me or if you want to step up and grab a brochure so you can get the URL or you can see that sample code, help yourself to it. Uh, and I appreciate um, the great job that the organizers have done and giving me the opportunity to present Beast to you. Thank you.